So earlier this week I made a transcription video of a Blake Mills solo that I really like and if you haven't seen that video you can check it out in the link up here or down in the description box. But today I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the key takeaways that I got from that video, uh, five to be specific. Because it's one thing to to take a, sp a specific lick and save it in your arsenal and uh, hold on to it until you have a song in the same tempo and same key, the same style perhaps, as the, the song you took the lick from uh, and just throw it in there where whatever it fits. That's one way to, to do it, but these, uh, these are pretty much concepts that are behind the licks that you can uh, take um, as an idea and experiment with and apply to all sorts of contexts. So uh, let's, let's see what we, uh, what we have learned from this solo. Uh, the first key point here, first, um, first thing is start with a bang. Blake Mills does this in a spectacular way. He, uh, he has a tone that really, really differs from uh, the guy that played before him, which is the legend Steve Cropper, which of course is the original guitar player on the, the track on Angry Nanias with the Bukati and the MGs. So Blake Mills could feel like he has some big shoes to fill, uh, but I don't think he sees it that way, because he, he just takes like a left turn and uh, goes off and do his, his really unique thing, instead of trying to follow up uh, Steve Cropper in any similar way. So that's a big, big thing for me. It's really cool to do some, some, <laughs> some contrasting thing, I guess. Because say, say we're at a jam session or something, and there's a guitar player that plays before you, and you're supposed to take the solo right after uh, that person. And say he ends up, you know, high up on the neck. I have very clean sound, so it won't sound too, <laughs> too climactic here, but say, say it finishes up with something like that, and you're, you're supposed to follow that, and you think to yourself, hmm, where should I go with this? Uh, I would say, do something that completely contrasts that. If he uh, ends up high, you start low. Or if he has a screaming lead tone, maybe you play clean for a while. Or if he plays fast, you play slow. Whatever it is. Um, so an, an example would be like, say, uh, of course the, the other player is up here somewhere. And it's your turn. Maybe you go... <coughs> something just play something completely different that would will get you to uh, kind of stick out of the uh, the bunch and that's a good thing especially at a, at a jam session where you maybe want to get noticed by by uh, other better musicians or something but yeah that's uh, that's the first uh, key thing that I learned the second thing is still the start of the solo it's the kind of organ lick that Blake plays, which is really cool. Now it sounds nothing like an organ with this clean sound, of course, but you can still grab the concepts from this and apply it to, to a better guitar tone. <laughs> but, uh, but the thing that I want to experiment with here, because it's, of course, as I said in the intro area, you can take that kind of note for note and wait for F minor blues and just play that exact lick. That's, that's of course something you could do. You could also uh, transpose it to different keys. Say you're in B minor instead. Then that lick would be down there instead. That's one way. Uh, however, it's much more interesting to me if you take the concept, which in this case would be you have a pedal tone and you move around uh, 
couple of notes uh, on top of that. You can play all sorts of things just uh, with having um, having that pedal tone as the anchor kind of. But but what if we would move that uh, that pedal tone up an octave and uh, move around the notes underneath it instead? That could sound something like. Uh, Again, it will be much cooler with some gain on the amp. <laughs> but that's one one way to go. Uh, another thing you can do is it, this is uh, using the uh, root note of the key as a pedal tone. You can of course use any other note of the scale as a pedal tone. Say uh, the fifth, so a C. That could be something like this. That's cool. You can also have uh, have some movement on top of the C note. Like that. That's also cool. And as you can see it sort of sort of is the same type of lick but ends up being something completely different. The third takeaway is how and where to build tension in your solos. And this is something that Blake does very well in uh, not only this solo, in a lot of his, his solos there are places where he throws in some just some, some dissonant weird sounding things and in this case he does it at the end of a 12 bar blues uh, chord progression and right at the end where, where it's the turnaround where it's gonna go back you know uh, that's that's a good place to to build some tension because it really uh, makes for a good release when the 12 bar starts over. So that's a good place to do it, and he does it in a cool way with that. Uh... Uh... <laughs> Something like that. Uh, really weird dissonant sounding lick that includes both uh, F major and F minor uh, minor third pretty much major and minor pentatonic on top of each other uh, or I noticed noticed that uh, it's also an F triad and like a B flat nine so the one chord and the four chord pretty much at the same time uh, using the uh, um, a kind of triads or in the nine chord it's not a triad I guess because there are more than three notes in a C9. Anyways, that is uh, one way to build tension, kind of using uh, just, you can you can actually just make up your own phrases with uh, like if you're in the F minor the pentatonic scale try to just add some of the notes in between the scale notes uh, one of my favorite ways is to play an E major triad and then go back to F minor. F minor, E major, F minor. E minor, a ma major, <laughs> and F minor. That's a cool way to do it as well. Uh, another way to add tension would be something like uh, Robin Ford. Uh, he usually does this particular thing when he, in a blues progression and going from the one chord to the four chord. And what he does is he plays uh, an F half whole diminished scale. Maybe that wasn't the best example. But yeah, uh, you can watch videos of him doing that in a much better way on YouTube. But that is uh, another way to add, add tension. 
it's something that really leads you to the next chord. You can basically do that with any with any chord. A lot of jazz mu musicians practice by adding a five chord in front of every chord. So there's uh, some extra movement uh, between each chord. But yeah, uh, that's another way. And uh, the final way to build tension that I'm going to mention here is something that I really liked doing a while ago and still kind of like, like to try sometimes. But it's a real simple thing because it's you're using the scale you're on, say F minor pentatonic still, and uh, you play a phrase. You move up half a step, so F sharp minor, and down again, and take it from there. That's a cool way to do it. You can you do what I did there and repeat the phrase. Uh, that makes it really obvious what you're doing, and that can be a very positive thing. But if you want to disguise it a bit more and make it not so obvious, you can of course do that by uh, playing something different. There I kind of went into, uh, it was maybe more of a Dorian or something, but uh, still uh, half step up at least. And that's the, the key part there. You could do, do it with any scale. Uh, but try it with minor pentatonic and uh, Dorian at first. You know, it's really really an easy way to build tension and to play some outside sounding uh, licks and ideas. It's really cool if you do what I did before and kind of repeat a phrase. The, the ear hears the phrase as, oh, that's the same thing once more, but it's completely different because it's filled with tension and sounds a bit dissonant, so it's really cool. It's really effective uh, when, you're, when you're playing, kind of, if you're on a one chord vamp or something. Uh, and you need to need to explore some more than just the blue scale maybe try try to do that sometimes it's it's real fun <laughs> so the fourth thing um, ties into what I just spoke about uh, it's repeat yourself Blake does this in uh, in a number of places here but uh, one particular thing that I think of is in the uh, some part of the solo where it goes to the B flat chord uh, is in this position or shape here. And then play something like that. And uh, he's using the same notes and kind of the same uh, same phrasing and things. It just, just varies it ever so slightly just to make it interesting. And that sounds. Uh, to me, that that makes it sound like oh he, he's he's onto something there, <laughs> you know. It's like um, he's saying something and develops it, which is exactly the last point here. Um, and it's say something with your solo, and that is precisely that. Um, try to try to play with with intent, like you're actually trying to communicate something, and that is, that can be kind of abstract way to say it maybe, but what that would translate uh, to, in a lot of cases at least, would be to leave space in between the notes. use similar repeating phrases, you know, similar things and space will make it sound like, uh, as I said before, like you're onto something, you're, you're going somewhere with this, it's not just... <laughs> that was real sour, but that would be a good example of not really having any specific phrasing or um, you're not really going anywhere with that kind of solo because it's basically just running scales and just connecting um, kind of ideas but it's just to me it's it's the place I go to where when I don't really know what to play 
and maybe when I have low confidence in my playing, <laughs> if I'm not not really uh, if I'm not really feeling too good about my own playing, I will usually end up playing a lot more kind of bullshitting phrases like my stock fast fast licks <laughs> that, is, that, is, that will be my go-to thing when I'm not really feeling confident so the opposite way would be to to play a few notes and just let them be like that and just Take take a breather and then uh, develop a theme, you know. Uh, play something maybe slightly different than, and develop on that. I'm really picking hard. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I guess you know what I mean. You're really developing, like a developing story here. We're not taking uh, one thing and then quickly going to another and then to another and then to another and just that that would be kind of like just throwing out a bunch of unrelated words where if you're playing things that relate to the the previous thing you're really building sentences you're building a story uh, you can you can even see it as different chapters though uh, in uh, in the Blake Mills solo I would really see that as the first chapter is that organ thing and then uh, the, it ends kind of there with, after like four phrases or something then he goes up and does something different and ends up uh, in that area and that's the next chapter for me so that's an interesting way to see it and you can kind of you can even see that uh, that, that lick, that tension building lick, as sort of a cliffhanger. Because if you end the chapter there, you really want to get to the next part where he ends up there. So, so it would, it's interesting to look at music as a language, and that's maybe a different video and a long one. <laughs> but if you, if you see it that way, things will be much more clear what to play. At least to me, uh, it, it kind of sparks some ideas just talking about it right now. <laughs> That's what's good about teaching uh, or making videos or whatever. You kind of explore ideas for yourself as well. But anyways, that's enough rambling for, for today, I think. Do you think this uh, is a good video format to do sort of a follow-up lesson and uh, maybe maybe five takeaways from, from a lesson here and there. Uh, is that a good idea? Please let me, uh, let me know down in the comments and also if you have any requests. Just write them down there and uh, we'll see what we can do. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!